first of all, would you tell us about where your family, who your family were and where you came from and all that? Well, I come from Granard County, Longford. Uh, my father came from Ros Boyle and Roscommon originally and he came up to Granard. His uncle's family had died, his son had died and his wife had died with TB. So my father, his father had died and his uncle said if he came he'd leave him the land. So that's how he came to Granard and then he got married there. And we lived in Granard. We lived in the town first and then the family, the children weren't getting good health and we bought, he bought a house, the old rectory up further. And we lived there for a good while. And, and your mother, what was your mother's name then? Stevenson. Stevenson. The, a family. They lived near Granard for a good while, yeah. Then not, hardly any of them left. And you you mentioned TB, and I suppose what I'm asking about this is that the, the present generation wouldn't know, wouldn't know about anything TB. about it. His so could you tell us a little bit about how bad it was in those days? Uh, well, if it was TB in a house, you wouldn't be allowed near it. You were warned not to go near that house or go into it. And uh, they went to hospital and died in hospital. And my father's uncle, his whole family, his wife and daughter and son, all died of it. And he was left with nobody, so he sent to my grandmother and said that if one of her sons came, he'd leave the land to him. And that's how he came to Granard. It was so, it was so shocking, wasn't it? Really? Oh, it was dreadful. Once dreadful. it came... Once it got into a house, it was the whole house nearly went. The whole family... Yeah. And, and then, obviously, the fear of it as well. Yeah. You know, mm. this, uh, if anybody coughed or anything like that. Oh, yes. You could. So. <clears throat> and, and when you were a child then, had that period passed or was it still there? It was still there a bit. It okay. passed eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, you, were, you were born, you were raised there, and do you remember going to primary school and all that there? Oh, I do, yeah. <laughs> there was... Uh, oh, about 16 people and one teacher. It's very cold. Very okay. cold? Very cold, yeah. You bring turf and uh, each family brought turf and there was no electricity or anything like that. So we all sit around the fire eventually. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and do you remember the teacher? I remember one teacher, Mrs Elliot, she was brilliant. I, I remember for this she started me off and she gave me a love of learning. After that, they were hopeless. And what was her, what did she love? What was her? She was just a good teacher. Okay. And she got you interested in learning. But she, she left after when I was about five or six. And uh, that was it. Then it's up to yourself after that. The rest of the teachers just did what they had to do. And then it, the school closed eventually. And where did you go then to secondary school or did you go to secondary I went to secondary school in Sligo. I went as a boarder. Oh, so. oh was that scary going to a boarding school? No, I enjoyed it. It was great. It was interesting. And we had games and hockey and uh, all kinds of things. Because I mean, some children would find that very scary to go off to no. a boarding school. But no, you didn't. no, I didn't. Well, I was quite old because. I was about 14 by the time I went to secondary school and I miss, they put me into the second class because I was, it was, I was advanced, so I got through that way. And did you make a lot of friends there then? Not an awful lot. At the time, yes, but it never lasted. And did you like, did you like Sligo? Yeah, we didn't see much of it. We were in boarding school and you'd go for crock walks with a teacher. I remember the... In 1947, there was big snow. We had no bread, and we were eating, we only had potatoes. That was all we had, mashed potatoes. It was awful. And then we were taken for a walk, and the snow was up much higher than I had. This um, uh, uh, cleared the roads that you could walk on, and the snow was up both sides, huge. And how long did that last for the snow? I can't remember. It's good. It must be a few weeks. I can't remember. Wow. Yeah. We used to go around with the asylum, that was part of the walk, and we'd see the people in the asylum out uh, working in the fields. Are we frightened of those people? Or? No, you just be aware of them, not frightened of them. But you wouldn't be near them, but keep an eye on them. 
So you were kind of on the outskirts of Sligo? On the outskirts of Sligo, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and the girls that were in the school, were they mostly from the area? Or were they they're all over, okay. yeah. And again, what did you like in school? Any particular subject or...? Uh, maths mostly. Okay. Maths, games. I never played games at home, so it was great. So what kind of games did you play? We played hockey, mostly. Oh, right. yeah. So you were competitive? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, um, it, from school then, did you have any kind of social occasions where you'd meet boys and all that kind of stuff? No. Okay. In church, you'd pass notes. <laughs> you'd pass notes? <laughs> yeah. Like what? I used to pass a note to someone, and someone would pass a note back to you, and the other girls were in on it. And, and would, they, would they be from a boys' school? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and would you go home then at and, um, Christmas and Easter? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, always. And which, was that, what was that like going back home? It got grand. I don't remember much about it. Okay. The part of what you did and that was it. And had you, how many brothers and sisters had you? One brother and one sister. Okay, and was she in the same boarding school? She was, yeah. Okay. And then after school then, where did you go, end up? Where did you go? I went to Dublin to Ling um, Physical Education College for three years. And got to do a diploma there. And I taught then in England for a year and then I taught in Newtown School for a year. And then I got married. And that was the end of that. And, and, and just in relation to Newtown, what was your memory of Newtown last age? Well, Billy Boggs was there then. And uh, that's the other man that I... Uh, he was an elder man. McClure. Sammy McClure was there. And uh, it was lovely. It was great. It was small. And the young people in the school, were they, where were they from? All over? Or All over, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It took them quite young to sometimes, you know, to, to come for the... Uh, about eight or nine, if their parents were going abroad, they'd send the children to Newtown. And they'd go to relations then for the holidays. Okay. There's some young, very young children in it, about eight or nine, and it's tough on them. And what did you did for physical education? Yeah. What was that involved? What, what was it? Oh, oh, games of all kinds and swimming, you had to teach. And then we used to go out to different schools to teach the children. There was um, oh, one out in uh, Dunleary I used to teach in. It's uh, uh, to keep... Um, I can't remember the name of it. And, and just in relation to um, Newtown, Waterford, that stage, did you live in Waterford or did you I lived in the school? In the school. Oh, okay. It had a house, a cool and a grain up in Newtown, and the, okay. so the, the teacher were there. And then how did you meet your husband then? My aunt knew his aunt, and, and that's how we met. You, did they arrange for you to meet, or did you just uh, just do it happens? His his aunt was a um, painter, and my aunt ran the. She was in um, Trinity College catering, and she knew they knew each other, and then uh, they came to Tremor. My sister-in-law would run the guest house in Tremor in Ocean View, and. And his aunt took my aunt down to Tremor for a holiday, and that's how they met. Then, then I met him up in Dublin. And tell me, um, <coughs> sorry, what was your maiden name? Burns, B U B U R N S. Okay, and he was what's he, what was his name? Moore. Yeah, what was his first name? Danny. Danny Moore. And then, what did he do? He was an accountant. Okay. And. Um, and so, where did you meet? Tell us the first time you met. Oh, it's in Dublin, my aunt's house in Dublin. He was up. 
he was up in business or something. I met him there. So long ago, it's yeah. hard to remember. And then, when you got married, did you get married in Dublin? No, we got married in Tremor. Oh, really? And did you like Tremor when you first came here? I thought it was brilliant. We were in the country and away from the sea, and you came to Tremor, just like heaven again. Okay. So it's just wonderful. We never had been in anything like that before. And was this house that you moved to? No, in Ocean View, down at the okay. end of the prom. Okay. The, the yeah. family had been in that house for a good while. Uh, Danny's father bought the house. There were two. Uh, the, there was a man called Coston, who was a builder, who decided to build a row of houses, a terrace of houses, up towards the town. And he did number one and number two. And then money ran out and there was no more built. So Danny's father bought the two houses. And what date then? Do you remember what date he was? No, three years ago. And was he was he originally from Chamor? I think I think he was from Waterford. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. And so you liked living here? Yeah. And, yeah. and what was your I mean you were quite close to the all the amusements and all that kind of stuff down there. Oh yes, we were trying to keep the children away from the amusements. It's almost impossible. So it was very noisy, I'd say, as well. Wasn't it? it would be very noisy, especially in the summer. Yeah. yeah. We ran a guest house as well okay. in Ocean so View. You, you were busy with that Busy as well. with that, were busy. And then nine children. Wow. <laughs> so he's number <laughs> You're number two, are you? Yeah. Nine children. Nine children, yeah. So oh, you didn't have much time. And did, at that stage, did you give up teaching? Oh, I, went, I, I gave up teaching after I got married. Okay. Yeah. Oh, was that kind of the normal? That was the normal. You didn't okay. never thought of teaching or continuing teaching after you were married. Okay. I don't know whether it wasn't allowed or not quite sure. Okay. And then, <coughs> did you find it easy to get to know the people in Tremor? Uh, not really. I didn't have that much because I was down in the other end of the prom and knew the local people. That was. It. And then was there a kind of community, like how did you, I mean, did you, like for example, was it through the church that you met people or how did More you? or less through the church, yeah. Okay. You knew on the schools and the children and parents, that way. And, and can you remember at that time when you first came, like what were the shops that you remember that kind of stand oh, out? What's the name of the little shop? Shallows on the corner. Was uh, Miss Cleary was in the shallows. She, the children used to get pennies worth of sweets from her, and she's still alive. And uh, there was um, the, the, Mrs. Mitchell had a chemist shop on the corner, and then there was oh, I can't remember what was the name of the man that had the shop where McCormick says good one. Goodwin's worked in it. Lodges, lodges up and that supplied the whole of Tremor, everything. Lodges were the big shop. And what families did you, at that time, in the, we say in the church, in the community that you were involved in, I mean, what families kind of were you moving or did you get to know or were they, who was, who was around that time? Crooks. The Melbournes were there. Oh. I can't remember anyone else. Okay, it's not hassle. And and you know, like in Tremor, where would you go? We say with the children, would would you go down to to the beach for a swim, or where would you go? Oh, the beach. Well, they spent their time on the beach, okay. stopping the water or building dams or something. I mean, you could let them out then. They didn't have to worry. They came back for food. That's how they, they became interested in surfing then. That's how the surfing started. They all swam. And, and did you did you teach them all to swim? No, someone else, I used to bring them to classes. They went into um, one in Waterford uh, on the road. I was, a lot of them went there. And oh, then oh, up to the uh, swimming pool? Like yes, okay. the swimming pool that was there. 
there's Newtown and then there no, was... No, not Newtown, the one out on the, on the way to Cork. Waterford Glass. And Waterford Glass. All the girls went to Waterford Glass. But the older ones, that wasn't there then, the older ones went down to the... down here to the harbour. Okay. So and yeah. they got lessons in the harbour. Right. They used to freeze. It was, what was the name of the man? Justin O'Malley. Justin O'Malley taught them all there. And he used to stay in the water and teach them. I don't know how he managed it. But he was making money to keep them in college. And uh, he was great with them. They all, all the older ones learned from Justin. And did you have a, did you have a boat around? Or no. The, the dad, dad had a boat on the, on the lake. Out at, uh, what's the name of the? Cargillantry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he fished. Right. Keen fisherman. And did you ever go out with him? No, and again, I wasn't interested in the, the boat, not really. But you obviously had no fright of fear of the water. Like no, 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 no. <coughs> and like with a with big gang of children like that, you wouldn't be too inclined to go on many holidays? Or anything. No, sure, you couldn't take them on holidays. <laughs> and how did you get around then? How did you, did you have a van or did you have a... Oh, a car, okay. a car. And, um, and, and were you able to get all that gang into the car? Um, most of them, some of them. I used to bring uh, the ch children to hockey uh, up in the school, uh, in uh, the girls' school. And they'd be hanging. I had a van with an, a yellow van with the doors at the back, and they'd all pack into it. And now you wouldn't be allowed, but there were so many then, they used to go to hockey, the whole gang. And they'd be hanging out the back. And, and tell me, do you like the big social occasions and more like the uh, race week and all that? Would you remember those? In the oh, I do because you'd be busy cooking, <laughs> packed with people. And I remember we had the Atlantic Hotel, and you'd have to lock the doors and only let residents in because you could, they'd be in and out. And I, I used to put somebody on the door to keep. The, and the whole of the street, the mains down from that down to the prom, would be full of people, packed. And, and like, obviously it was a big, a time you could make a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but would you have regular people that came every year? Oh yes, okay. and the same room and the same table and the same food. Oh, you, you know what I have, I serve it up. And where were they coming from? Where were they coming from? Cork. Carlo, Wexford, they're all around this area. And would it be kind of serious gamblers or were they kind of like just... Well, they'd bring bags of money that they would have been collected all year, plastic bags full of money, and the women would, and, and then they would spend it all. Oh, the they'd collect the money all, the so all winter. For the slot machines? For, for the slot machines, yeah. And then with the horsey crowd, were they, were they, with the jockeys and all them, and the Some, trainers? And sometimes, not many of them, some of them did. Some of the families did. Okay. And what about the dances? Would you remember all the... The, the, but the dances in the Atlantic Ballroom, and there were two sessions, and they'd be queuing up for the second session. It was packed. Two sessions always, yeah. And would there ever be any trouble at these things? Or would no. Be? Okay. I don't remember any trouble. And then they started the Silver Slipper Ballroom then, and it was great success, sure. And did you ever go dancing yourself? No. You were too busy? <laughs> too busy. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and then w would you ever get back up to Longford at all when you were... Oh yeah, I'd go up to see my mother and father maybe twice a year, or three times a year. I'd drive up and stay a few days and come home. And were you involved with the... Um, Tennis club or no. or the golf club or anything? no? Okay, so did you have any? I mean, you said you were into maths in school. Did you play cards? Did you play no bridge or anything? Like that? No, and my husband played bridge, a brilliant bridge player, but I didn't. And he never, you never played with him? No, I played early on, but I didn't give it up. It's too serious. Okay. They'd ask you what you meant by a certain discard, and you wouldn't have a clue. You. The one that was the easiest, nearest your left hand. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so what was your leisure activity then for you, personally? Uh, not much. I did a lot of knitting. And, uh, 
uh, late in life I started painting. But that was more or less when I retired. But I enjoyed the painting. And did you do lessons in painting or? Yeah, I still do. Okay. So, enjoy that. And what kind of painting do you do? Oil painting. Oh. So is this some of your work here? Yeah. Oh. And that's my daughter's one. That one behind you is one of mine. And I have more on there. This, this one's lovely. Yeah, that one, yeah. yeah. And, <clears throat> and so, um, so you always had a good eye then for things? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Um, and did you pass that on to your family? Oh, yeah, well, well, my eldest daughter is a, a painter, a professional. She went to art college. But none of the others do. They're mostly interested in maths and things, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which is the fact, well, both of you had the mathematics. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You were involved in ballet a lot. Oh, yeah, I used to bring the children to ballet in Miss Moriarty in Waterford. Mm. I was oh. secretary of the, of the ballet school. Where was her school? She, did, she ran it when she was from Cork. She had the big school in Cork. She used to come up once a week to Waterford to Newtown School with the gym in Newtown School. And the classes were there's the only thing for girls then. There's no shit. They were swimming later, but at the time the only thing they had was ballet. And some of them were good, and some of them hated it, but they went anyway. And she, Mrs. Moriarty, was famous. Wasn't oh, she? she was. She was brilliant, mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant. Which was scary. Oh, she was oh yeah, the children were scared of it because they'd have to go to Cork for exams. And then if you weren't good enough when you went to Cork for the ch ch check-up, you be, wouldn't be let in to do the exam. Oh, so it was very, it was serious. Oh, very serious, extremely serious. And, and just go back then to Tremor, um, the circus, did you have an involvement or did you, did you help out the circus? No. Some, where did the circus perform when they came to Tremor? Where did they perform then, Daniel? They weren't down where they are now, no. Was it up in the GA? I don't remember where they were originally. They used to be in the GA and then I think sometimes up by the race course. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But you, and, and what about, I mean, did you have a bit of land around the area or anything like that? No, we just had the bit in front of the garden and just okay. down as far as the, the, down further, that's all, just the garden. And did you get ever? You didn't get ever get involved in the whole horsey thing. No. Okay. No. Because that was would be associated. Well, it was the thing in your fa family was all my ancestors lost their money through horses and gambling and drink, so horses and drink were just not in the family. You just didn't have anything to do with drink or horses. So, and then. One of my brothers-in-law was an alcoholic, and so definitely wasn't any drink in the house. But well, not necessarily the horse racing, but you know the kind of um, on Stephen's Day, didn't you used to have to hunt and all that kind of stuff. Oh, you go and watch the hunt and follow it. Okay. With a load of children in the back, but that was all. So that was a kind of a good uh, yeah. kind of a, a yeah, tradition. They'd meet up outside the majestic. And uh, then go from there. It's a day out. And can you remember back then too when when you first came to Tremor, any of the kind of characters that were around the place or anything? Like any of the people that were kind of even the people in the shops or. I remember Mr. Goodwin, in the shop in the vegetable shop up the town. That's where you got your vegetables. And the uh, largest. And there was another his another good one man in the hardware in lunches. And then the other brother did all the milk. He he ran on the whole milk thing in 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 Shamor. He delivered all the milk. And and tell me, do we you were uh, were you Protestant or were you... Protestant. And how did you get on then with the Catholic people in the area? What get was, on great with them, no problem. There was never any... No. Which is kind of funny in the sense of, like we say, given the, the, I suppose, the history and everything, yeah. that there was never any... Never any problems. Mm. No. And who was the rector when you came here first? Oh, 
Do you remember? I remember Tall Tin Man. Well, Mr. Wolf was here originally. Mr. Porter. Mr. Porter was after him. Tall Tin Man. He was there more a lot of the time. And would they have? Would there be any particular social occasions that would be associated with the Protestant community here? And was there? A, Not really. Any kind of annual dance or any no. annual. Harvesting or that. There'd be the harvest uh, Thanksgiving in the church and that's the same thing, but that's all. Okay. And would you ever go into town then, into Christchurch or anything like that? Or was that uh, yes, no, and again, if there was something on, something okay. special on. <clears throat> and then, was there anything, we say, in relation to funerals that were particular to, no. say, with the Protestant tradition? Was there anything that was different? No, there wasn't anything different. Okay. I don't think so. Mm. Um, and and then um, for the boys and girls, then they went to local they primary to, school. They went to the local primary school. And then what secondary then? The, uh, two of them went to Newtown, and Daniel hated it. And then the rest of them went to the local schools, up to the brothers and to the convent. And was there any? There was no problem with that. Was never there? any problem. No. And and what what they, would they just sit out of the classes, the religious classes and stuff? Or? I don't know. I don't know what they did. <laughs> they could have gone to them for all I know. I don't know. There's uh, never any problem anyway. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't an issue. No, never an issue. Okay. And then how did you? What did you think of the surfing and all that when they started to get into it? I was a bit scared about that. I wouldn't watch them surfing because in case anything happened. But then they got used to it. It was great. It kept all the boys out of mischief. It was marvellous for them. Or into mischief. Yeah. Which no, they, they wouldn't. Be, they kept them out of the pubs because they're all uh, competing for places on teams. And they mean you, you, behave, you behaved yourself and didn't go drinking or gallivanting at night. So they were all. It was great for them. Really good for them. So you were all for it then? All for it, yeah. Okay. Just great for the children. And, and did, did any of them compete? Oh yeah, they still do. I had three, three boys and one of the girls on the Irish team going to Japan one time. <coughs> still, the grandchildren are still on the, some of them are on the Irish team. And how did you manage, like, if someone was going off to Japan, like four of them going off to Japan, did they have to fundraise themselves? Yeah. Wow. So there's yeah. no kind of support in the No, 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 never was. Oh my God. No. Because that would, that would be cheap. No, it wasn't cheap. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but I mean, the... I don't remember it being an issue though. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, um, but you never had to go and surf yourself? No. No, no. I used to, I used to swim, that was all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, um, <coughs> Would you follow them around to competitions? Not very often. They usually went in a group. Okay. No, I didn't go to the company. They'd go to a slide going up to Bundorn. And I didn't follow them, no. I was too busy anyway at home with the arrest. I was glad to see them occupied. And then I'd, uh, Sarah was in the sports. She was high jumper. She did high jumping. And she came. She, was a uh, monster high jump champion and she hurt her back and it had to stop. And, and um, <coughs> so they all went to local schools Yeah. and, and, and then uh, did any of them get involved in local other sports besides surfing? Sor sor was there any other? No, okay. uh, they didn't play Gaelic, no. No, I don't do it. And then within within the, for the for the next generation, right? How did they did they meet people through just socially themselves? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, you never knew where they were at night. They were gone. <laughs> but there was nothing arranged through the church or no, 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 no. Okay, nothing like that. No. And would you find, therefore, that the Protestant community in Tremor is actually getting very small? It has got very small, okay. much smaller. 
And and would you see it kind of fading out, or would you see it? More or less, there's a few left. But there's a few that are left are very staunch, but uh, there's not that many. And how do you then? Do you have a service every week? It's, I don't go to church. Okay, but, so, but you don't even know then. The hardly there is a service every week. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're not bothered about no. yourself. Okay. Um, and just in relation to that then, about how Ireland has changed, because I mean, from your childhood to now, there's been a huge change. A oh, huge, huge. Um, I mean, you were talking earlier on about ponies and traps. That's right, yeah. Uh, <coughs> to now where we're on the, people on the internet and all uh, that it's, kind of stuff. It's huge. The internet and that kind of thing is enormous. I mean, if We didn't have a um, phone in the house when I was growing up. That's when he came there. Or electricity. I remember the electric electricity coming at first. It's a lamp. You used to go to the lamps at night and get a candle going to bed. It's just, it's huge. In this generation, it's enormous. And would you think that we've lost anything, or would you think we've, it's been all plus? No, I think it's good. Yeah, I do. You don't, there's not as much of a community spirit. The place was smaller anyway, you knew everybody. Now you don't know, and there's, you hardly know anyone. There's housing all over the place, new people in, you don't know them. But then you knew everybody, I mean, it's just much easier. So, <coughs> so you actually see it as a good thing where we are now. I think it, it is as okay. much for the yeah. And and, and just even the, you were talking about the uh, when you were talking about TV and all that, but I mean there was a lot of poverty as well, wasn't there? There was a lot of poverty, mm. an awful lot of poverty. So, and then do you find it? I mean, because in another way in Ireland at that time, we were coming out of a kind of a, I suppose after the War of Independence and all that kind of stuff. And the, the new Irish government. Did you think that Protestants were being treated badly in Ireland at that time? No, we never had any problems. Okay. No. My father was a farmer. And I don't think so. Okay. Never had any problem. And and your um, your husband, uh, he his people. Where did they come from? You said they were from Waterford, but do you know anything about their background? His father, his father was from Limerick. He was station master at, in Limerick, and he seemingly came to Waterford and lived in Waterford. And they, they all married. there were nine of them in the family. They all disappeared. I don't know what to say. He. He married late in life. He was retired nearly by the time he got married to my grandma. My grand, my mother-in-law was a Methodist minister's daughter in Tremor, and he married her. He was quite old when he got married, but they had nine children after that, so he mustn't have been that old. It was a bit of life, though. It must have been, yeah. <laughs> So the Moors are prolific, aren't they? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I have 30 grandchildren. Yeah. So. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I just wonder, is there anything else, Keith, that you're thinking about? Uh, um, so, so, so is, uh, like names or shops? Names of no, 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 but just any subjects that we haven't covered. Right now. Um, because we're, we're trying to kind of, obviously we're hitting on different topics, topics yeah. about, uh, sure. uh, about um, Tremor and that's why we mentioned things like the race week we mentioned yeah. um, well, race week was uh, huge then well just in relation to the, 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 the we say the poor people in Tremor where, what parts where did they live in what, was there any particular when you first mm -hmm. came there mostly down at the back of Ocean View up of Riverstown I think and okay. they were the council houses yeah uh, and again, was there much? There was no kind of separate schools or anything like that. It was no, all the same. No, no, it was the same. It was all mixed in. Yeah. The boys went to, to Christian girls. But the, the girls, girls went to the, con the convent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Okay, well that's great, and uh, that's really good. Uh, I think that was used to you. No, 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 it's all useful. It's yeah. all useful, uh, and we'll we'll be getting little bits and pieces out of it. So oh, yeah, that's great. Okay, if you don't that's get it. ink, it doesn't matter. Thank you very much. Okay, right, thank you. Thank you.